New year, new you, and a bunch of new RPGs to look out for on the horizon. In this video, we're going to talk about the top 23 RPGs and expansions to look out for in 2023 and beyond. Keep watching to see it all. What's up everyone, Big Dan here. I make videos about RPGs and action games. So if you enjoy this video, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to Big Dan Gaming. Without further ado, let's dive right in. Number 1. Hogwarts Legacy Set in the universe of Harry Potter, aka the Wizarding World, Hogwarts Legacy is an ambitious single-player open-world RPG that releases on February 10th. I've been keeping a close eye on the gameplay reveals and details that have been dropping about Hogwarts Legacy, and the game looks really impressive in scope. A lot of the marketing material hints at the possibility of some major story choices and consequences, including the option to train in the dark arts. Only time will tell if the choices will live up to the hype though, as pretty much every RPG claims that your choices matter in their cinematic trailers and marketing. I really wonder if the game will let you fully go over to the Dark Magicians. Because if they do, then I'm excited to dive into Hogwarts Legacy, team up with Slytherin, and blast some fools with Avada Kedavra. Because there is no such thing as good and evil, only power, and those too weak to seek it. Number 2. Starfield Skyrim fans will have to wait a while longer for Elder Scrolls VI, since Bethesda has spent the last few years developing its first space RPG. This will be the first original IP that the studio has developed since establishing the Elder Scrolls back in the 1990s. If you've played Skyrim, Fallout 4, or really any other Bethesda game, you probably know what to expect at this point. A massive game world to explore with interesting encounters, quests, and the ability to chart your own journey. Also a fair degree of bugs and glitches, but hopefully not to the degree of their last release, Fallout 76. I'll be honest. The gameplay reveals from last year were a little underwhelming, and Todd Howard's proclamation that there are over 1,000 explorable planets in Starfield suggests the game may be wide as an ocean and deep as a puddle. But as a huge fan of space RPGs, as well as Bethesda's older titles, I'm cautiously optimistic about Starfield. However, the game was delayed from its original release window of November 2022 to a vague first half of 2023. Delays may suggest that the studio is taking its time to polish things to perfection, or it may mean that behind the scenes the game is a complete mess. So I would definitely wait for reviews on this one, unless you're a content creator, or you're just dead set on playing the game day one no matter what. Number 3. Dragon Age Dreadwolf it's been nearly 10 years since Bioware released the last entry in the Dragon Age franchise, and so far they've been pretty quiet about their next project, dubbed Dreadwolf. We've seen a couple of vague cinematic trailers, but so far no gameplay and no firm release date. According to a report from Games Insider Jeff Grubb, the studio is hoping to release this game in late 2023. But this information is over a year old at this point, and no official release date has been set, so I'm skeptical that we'll be playing Dragon Age this year. For those unfamiliar with the franchise, Dragon Age is an epic fantasy RPG with a hybrid action slash strategy combat system. You control a party of up to four team members and can pause the action at any time to queue up spells, abilities, potions, etc. Much like its sister franchise Mass Effect, the Dragon Age games are known for great characters, writing, and giving the player big story choices. That being said, a lot of the original visionaries and people who worked on this franchise are no longer at Bioware, so we'll have to wait and see if Dreadwolf lives up to the expectations set by its predecessors. Number 4. Cyberpunk 2077's Phantom Liberty DLC Cyberpunk has seen a hell of a redemption arc over the past year, with numerous updates and fixes to the game, and a bunch of new and returning players flooding in after the success of the Edge Runners anime. Phantom Liberty will most likely be the only expansion for the game, and for now, details are relatively scant. We do know that Idris Elba will be in the game, and that Keanu is coming back to play Johnny Silverhand again. We also know that the expansion will have something to do with the Crystal Palace and the NUSA. What we don't have is a specific release date at the moment, just that it's supposed to come in 2023. Number 5. Baldur's Gate 3 
Set in the Forgotten Realms universe of Dungeons & Dragons, Baldur's Gate 3 is the successor to Bioware's classic RPGs from 1998 and 2000. The game is set 120 years after the events of Baldur's Gate 2, and I'm curious to see if and how these stories are linked together. That being said, Baldur's Gate 3 will play much differently than its predecessors, with turn-based combat encounters instead of the real-time with pause combat of the original. Technically, this game has been available in an early access state since late 2020, but we'll finally see the full version of the game this August, assuming no more delays occur. I typically avoid early access games, especially story-driven ones, because I don't like having cliffhangers for years, so I have been waiting for the full release to jump into Baldur's Gate 3. But I'm truly impressed with what I've seen from this game from afar, it's the most ambitious CRPG I've ever seen, with its attempt to blend old-school isometric gameplay with cinematic cutscenes and storytelling. Larian Studios has an impressive track record with the Divinity Original Sin games, and I have full confidence they'll be able to deliver an epic RPG experience with Baldur's Gate 3. Number 6, Mass Effect 4. Or is it Mass Effect 5? I guess we don't have an official title at this point, but Bioware is definitely working on its first Mass Effect game since 2017. We have almost no details about the game at this point, and it's likely a long way away from launch since the studio is planning to release Dragon Age Dreadwolf first. The original gameplay trailer featured Liara, a major character from the original trilogy. It also featured shots of both the Andromeda and Milky Way galaxies, implying that the next game may tie Mass Effect Andromeda's plotline together with a sequel to Mass Effect 3. Mass Effect is my all-time favorite video game franchise, so naturally I'm excited to get a new game in the series. I just hope it lives up to the legacy of the original trilogy. Who knows? Maybe we'll even get to play as Commander Shepard once again. Number 7. Avowed From the developers of Fallout New Vegas and The Outer Worlds, Avowed is an upcoming first-person fantasy RPG which appears to be Obsidian's answer to The Elder Scrolls. It will be set in the same universe as the isometric Pillars of Eternity games. This is another one of those games that is nearly a complete mystery at this point. Since their initial reveal trailer in the summer of 2020, the studio has been radio silent about the game's development, and the website for Avowed is a simple splash page with the trailer, a one-line description, and the platforms we can expect the game to release on. Given that Obsidian is owned by Microsoft, it's reasonable to expect that Avowed will be an Xbox and PC exclusive upon release. So PlayStation gamers will likely have to wait to dive into the world of Eora, unless you want to go back and play Pillars of Eternity. Number 8. Forspoken. This upcoming action RPG from Luminous Productions and Square Enix comes out in less than three weeks. This is a PS5 exclusive, and there is a free demo available now if you want to check it out before release. The game's protagonist, a cat lady named Frey, is transported from New York City to the magical realm of Athia. She must use her newfound magical abilities to survive in this strange world as she tries to find her way back home. The gameplay heavily emphasizes fast and fluid traversal of the open world terrain, as well as magical combat. The combat kind of reminds me of Control, except with magic instead of guns. It looks like a fun game, but I don't have a PS5, so I'll wait and see about reviews, and maybe check it out if there's a PC release in the future. Number 9. Wo Long Fallen Dynasty From the developers of Neo, Wo Long Fallen Dynasty is a Souls-like action RPG set to release in March of 2023. The main character looks like a scuffed Sekiro, but from the bits of gameplay I've seen so far, the game looks absolutely badass. Wo Long appears to have a bit more of a fast-paced, hack-and-slash style combat as compared to the slower and more deliberate movesets of the Dark Souls games. The game is set in late-era Han Dynasty China amidst a collapsing empire where demons plague the Three Kingdoms. Wo Long is a double entendre, on one hand, it refers to a crouching dragon, but it can also mean a person who rises to greatness out of nothing. So in other words, the protagonist is on the come up. Wo Long Fallen Dynasty is multi-platform on PlayStation, PC, and Xbox, including day one on Game Pass. Number 10, Diablo 4. Blizzard has had a rough go of things these past few years in terms of its public image. 
The company has been plagued with scandals and angered its player base with its monetization practices, especially with the egregious pay-to-win Diablo Immortal. And yet the studio has continued to rake in tons of cash, while CEO Bobby Kotick laughs all the way to the bank. I guess we did have phones after all. Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys that all have phones, phone, right? Diablo 4, which we've been waiting for for almost as long as Elder Scrolls 6, will finally release in June of this year. Apparently the game will not be pay to win, but it will have microtransactions in the form of a cosmetic shop and a battle pass, in addition to being a full price game. I'm relatively new to the ARPG genre, having only played Grim Dawn and Lost Ark at this point, but I'm definitely interested in Diablo 4, and I'll likely check it out after seeing the reviews this summer. Number 11, Ravenbound. Will this be the game to take the spot of Assassin's Creed Valhalla? Ravenbound is a bit more action than RPG. It's actually an open-world roguelite game inspired by Scandinavian folklore, and while the game does not yet have a firm release date, there are gameplay reveals available which give us a sense of what Ravenbound is all about. One interesting feature is the ability to polymorph into a raven to traverse long distances in the open world. Roguelite games are centered on individual runs that end with the character's death. So when you die in combat, you start a new run, losing most of your accumulated items. The game world will also change slightly between runs, as the individual map locations are randomly generated, so while the terrain looks the same, you will encounter different enemies and events along the way. So you'll mostly just be exploring the world and fighting different packs of enemies to make your character as strong as possible. This type of game might not be for everyone, but if this type of gameplay interests you, be sure to keep an eye on Ravenbound. Number 12, Black Myth Wu-Tang. I'm sorry, Black Myth Wukong. Created by the Chinese indie developer Game Science, this game is based on a 16th century novel called Journey to the West. The player character is a monkey, no, I'm not making this up, called Sun Wukong, aka the Monkey King. According to Wikipedia, Sun Wukong is a monkey born from a stone who acquires supernatural powers through Taoist practices. After rebelling against heaven, he is imprisoned under a mountain by the Buddha. So that's the lore. As for the gameplay, well, it seems pretty Souls-like to me. There's a heavy focus on melee combat, dodge rolling, and facing down big boss type enemies. I'll be curious to see what the enemy variety is like in this game, and if there are any mechanics that make it stand out from the million Souls-like games already out there. The visuals are extremely impressive, owing to the game being made in Unreal Engine 5, but great visuals do not a good game make, so I'll most likely be waiting for reviews on this one. Number 13, The Witcher Remake. I feel like the OG Witcher from 2007 doesn't get enough love these days. The combat is a bit of a janky mess, but it's one of my favorite RPGs of all time. So when CD Projekt Red announced their plans to remake the first Witcher game, I was really excited. We don't have a lot of details about the project at this point, since it's in early development and only became public knowledge about two months ago. What we do know is that the game is being rebuilt from the ground up in Unreal Engine 5 by a third-party Polish studio called Fool's Theory. CDPR will fully oversee the project creatively. This remake is probably a long ways out at this point, but it's worth keeping an eye out for this one. Number 14, Greedfall 2. Okay, so if I'm being honest, I thought the first Greedfall game was pretty mid. It got a lot of praise when it was released in 2019, but there was a bit of an RPG drought at that time. A lot of the reviewers were calling the developers Spiders the spiritual successor to Bioware. And I don't know, bro. Sure, they followed the Bioware template, but the writing and gameplay were nowhere near as good. That being said, Greedfall showed some promise and it had some good ideas. It was a unique take on fantasy RPGs that focused more on Colonia era technology rather than the overplayed medieval era European inspired games we've seen so much of. And given that the game sold over a million copies in its first year, perhaps Spiders can build a more ambitious and polished sequel. Or rather, a prequel, considering Greedfall 2 is set to take place three years before the first game, presumably showing off the outbreak of the Malachor Plague, which wrecked your homeland in Greedfall 1. 
Greedfall 2 is still in the early stages of development, so we likely won't see anything this year, but maybe in 2024. Number 15, One Piece Odyssey. Based on the extraordinarily popular anime slash comics, One Piece Odyssey is an action role-playing game that is actually coming out this month. The graphics and character models are... Hoo boy, they are something else. Combat is turn-based, and you control a group of Straw Hat crew members during various battle scenarios. Combat encounters may also generate random events where you have to complete specific challenges to gain extra experience or rewards. I watched a few trailers for this, and while I know One Piece has a massive audience, I don't think this one is for me. Number 16, Octopath Traveler 2. Another Square Enix RPG dropping in February, Octopath Traveler 2 allows you to follow the journey of eight different characters in a 2D art-styled world that reminds me of 1990s Final Fantasy and Pokemon games that I played on Game Boy back in the day. Each character has their own different path that they follow with the goal of winning over people to their cause along the way. Paths include things like ending poverty or war, or just getting in touch with your inner self. Combat is turn-based, and you can either run your path solo or recruit other NPCs to fight alongside you. Octopath Traveler 2 is technically the third game in the franchise, since there was also a prequel story. It will be interesting to see if Octopath Traveler 2 can live up to the success of the first game, which sold over 3 million copies back in 2018. Number 17, Final Fantasy 16. I was a huge Final Fantasy fan growing up, but I haven't played many of their more recent titles. Final Fantasy XV was a flop, and the studio has gone through a lengthy development on the sequel, which is finally arriving as a PS5 timed exclusive in June. Will this be enough to get me back into the franchise? Maybe. The visuals sure do look awesome, but I want to see some more gameplay. So far, we've mainly seen cinematic trailers and brief vertical slices of the combat. The combat gives off some Bayonetta, hack and slash type vibes, with some cool cinematics for summons and the like. Apparently, they will be abandoning the open world model, which is probably for the best, since FF15 was not a good open world. Expect to see a major ramping up of marketing for this game, since the release is only a few months away. Number 18, The Lords of the Fallen. Not to be confused with the first entry in the series, Lords of the Fallen, which was released back in 2014, The Lords of the Fallen is an upcoming Souls-like action RPG from Hexworks and CI Games. They previewed the first snippets of Vertical Slice gameplay during the Game Awards, and this game looks pretty badass from an art direction perspective. The visuals in particular are super impressive owing to Unreal Engine 5. But as with all of these Souls-like games, how will The Lords of the Fallen differentiate itself from Dark Souls and other games in this massive genre? One interesting feature is the online co-op multiplayer, allowing players to tackle the grueling journey of combat with a buddy. But the Souls games have this too, so it's not necessarily unique. At the end of the day, if the gameplay slaps, then I'm down to journey through the Lords of the Fallen. It will be available on PC and next-gen consoles sometime in 2023. Number 19, Gothic Remake. Developed by Piranha Bytes, the original Gothic from 2001 is a cult classic. However, the controls in combat are incredibly clunky and outdated by modern standards. I tried to play this game a few years back and just couldn't get into it, so when I heard that the game was getting a remake, I was immediately interested. THQ Nordic acquired Piranha Bytes back in 2019 and released a playable demo for their first prototype of the Gothic remake later that same year. The goal is to create a faithful rebuild that preserves the spirit of the original Gothic while modernizing the gameplay and combat. I'm excited to see if they can pull this off, and the game is currently slated for a tentative December 2023 release, though that may get pushed back into next year. Number 20, Flintlock The Siege of Dawn. This is one of the games that I'm most excited about for 2023. Flintlock is an action RPG combining magic, swords, and colonial era weapons with a Souls-like combat system. You also have this cute little fox companion that helps you out in combat. What really impressed me was the fluidity of traversal and movement, along with the deliberate commitment of each sword swing, gun blast, and magical action. The tagline really caught my eye too. 
join humanity's last stand as gods and guns collide in an all-new action RPG open-world adventure. From the gameplay reveals I've seen so far, this game looks absolutely badass, and it's slated to release on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation in early 2023. Number 21. Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom The massively anticipated sequel to the groundbreaking Breath of the Wild is set to release on Nintendo Switch in May. I still don't have a Switch at this point, and I haven't played Breath of the Wild, so I'll be passing on this one for now but I would be remiss if I didn't include it in the list. Breath of the Wild sold 27 million copies on Switch and also served as a major inspiration for Genshin Impact, which itself has over 80 million downloads worldwide. So clearly this type of open world experience is incredibly popular. Number 22, The Outer Worlds 2. Obsidian announced the sequel to their space RPG franchise back in 2021. The reveal trailer mocked the style of modern gameplay reveals and acknowledged that the game was nowhere near ready. And given that the original Outer Worlds took about three years to develop, we could expect to see this game maybe in 2024, though it's hard to say. The first Outer Worlds was pretty narrow in scope and only took about 25 to 30 hours to complete all of the content in the game. There was a lot of replayability with different story choices and branching paths, but I'm curious to see if this studio will expand the size of the sequel, especially since they're now owned by Microsoft. There definitely aren't enough space RPGs out there, so I'm excited for The Outer Worlds too. It ain't no Mass Effect, but it's still an enjoyable experience nonetheless. Number 23, Fable. I was a big fan of the Fable games back in middle school, but the franchise has been dormant for a long time. The goofy and dark humor in a bizarre medieval fantasy setting, with a small explorable game world heavily packed with activities, are the things that made Fable stand out from other franchises like The Elder Scrolls, Dragon Age, and The Witcher. So when Microsoft dropped an official reveal trailer for a new Fable game back in 2020, people went ballistic. Since then, there haven't been many details about this project other than rumors and the like. I would relish the opportunity to jump back into this franchise, I just hope they get it right this time. So there you have it, the top 23 RPGs to look out for in 2023 and beyond. There are a few other games that I left off this list that I'm kind of excited about, like Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 and the KOTOR remake. But both of those games seem trapped in development hell at the moment, and their future is uncertain, so I kept them off this list for now. Were there any games you're excited about that I missed? Let me know in the comments below. I'm always keeping an eye out for new RPGs to play. If you liked this video, be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more RPG videos and reviews. If you want to support this channel even further, consider becoming a member. For $5, you can get your name in the credits of these videos, as well as access to custom chat emojis and other fun perks. So if you want to be a member, hit the join button right now. Big shout out to all the channel members for supporting my content. Until next time, this has been Big Dan. I should go.